we can all agree that the ugliest cars in the world are mostly vans. Yes, shoebox looking style cars that are quite large and are once again very, very ugly. Um, when you do get to drive them, sit in them, you notice, oh, it's quite spacious in here. It's almost like an SUV. You know what? Yes, vans do have their use. They're very practical, utilitarian. And everybody, that same applies for sky vans. Literal flying shoe boxes like this. Everybody, the shorts 360 that we now have for the flight simulator people call the ugliest flight simulator plane. Should have been released by the developers of Black Box. So yes, they focus on box planes. <laughs> really bark. If you remember last year, they released the Trilander plane. Yes, the weird British plane that has three engines and looks like an MD-11, but like prop version and miserable. No, I should probably not be this negative in this video. Yes, they've released this pretty cool add-on here of the Shorts Brothers airplanes with cool avionics and systems that actually look quite promising. Check out that lighting. Check out these interiors. We're going to check all of that out today. We have the variants of the 360, the bigger one, and the 330, the smaller one. And actually quite uglier one and the military version all of which cost 30 euros but you can buy them combined in the premium edition for 50 euros i only bought the uh, 360 because i'm too cheap i mean come on having the shorts 360 in the flight simulator definitely isn't bad at all it hasn't been produced since 1991 yes it made its first flight uh, 10 years prior in 81 pretty short production time and only 165 of these were built not much at all very rare sight and god the 330 is actually Actually quite a lot uglier. Well, then it's a shame I only bought the 360, which looks a little bit better, but surely it is an incredibly um, quirky plane still. Let's maybe take a look at the cockpit which is very old school. All right, let's get going here. We're on a very short runway here in the Alpine Mountains. We might be able to take off here. We can have right there, we have a cable uh, kind of hanging along. Come on, there we go. We're able to take off pretty much anywhere. This is a very powerful airplane with those Pratt & Whitney engines. Actually, we did just, just stole out there. Maybe the 360 isn't even that stole after all. No, this was never built as a stall plane. It did operate on very short runways. Damn, did we just crash through a cable? Glad the flight simulator doesn't take care of that. This plane flew a lot, you know, through the British Isles, for example, from Jersey to Guernsey. There you go, we've just uh, taken up. We've, actually, it does have gear extension. And so we're flying along on this very flat plane. Yes, it is a box. People do wonder, well, how does this thing fly? It's got relatively short wings and it's literally square, which makes it seem as though this thing should be less aerodynamic than a house, which it probably is. We're able to fly though. With these powerful turboprop PT-6 engines, we're able to fly well. We take a look into the cockpit. Where we find the best of equipment. For example, a fan. Can we open the window? Oh yeah, that's gonna get you some fresh air. Pretty sure you're able to do that. I mean, what's really funny about this plane too is that it has a literally square window. It's completely square. Let's maybe go into the cabin, which works. Um, we've got two cabin doors, by the way. You have to just slide them, which is definitely incredibly safe. Check this out, everybody. We've got square windows everywhere. This has got the cabin of a train. You know, it's very rare to see square windows, especially after uh, the Comet plane crashed because they had them built into it and the plane fell apart in midair. They were like, oh, if we build square windows into our plane, it may fall apart. Let's come on, let's maybe look outside. Everything's looking good. Something you do have out of this plane is a great view. It's kind of like a Cessna 172 from here. All right, so we've got a telephone. Uh-huh, and a lavatory. Great, and a toilet. Toilet paper, this is not a good review. Yeah, overall, pretty good looking at on so far. I don't even hate this at all. We can put the landing guard. Everything is fine, but let's maybe go ahead and spawn into the ground. We go to, uh, we go to uh, Great Saint Bartholomew. Yes, the Caribbean is the home of the short 360. I mean, it was built for island hopping. So you see it a lot here, especially at Princess Joanna. Let me spawn onto the parking. And here we can truly experience how realistic this plane is. Because that we've got all the doors open right here. A very secure ladder. And a ladder even here for the cargo area. Yes, you could sleep in there. I, mean, I don't know, this could be the premium room. But if we get to the cockpit, we actually notice, damn, this thing was well done done by the developers. Let's maybe go ahead and maybe take it for a spin. Let's run on the batteries. That should go. Let me see if we can start those engines up right here. Start master. Armed. Okay. Starter engine on. Ignition. Start. Please. Mm-hmm. Looking good. We've got temperature. We've got fuel flow going. We've got all that going. We can turn on the left engine too. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That engine is spinning well. A quick, quickly turning on the airplane. Perfect. Same as the left engine. Absolutely fine. Nice. We can also turn on the avionics master with this big switch right there. Absolutely fine. There we go. And this plane is ready to fly. In general, here I just noticed on the startup sequence that damn, this is a realistic plane. I mean, you can't find one switch that doesn't work. It's ridiculous. I mean, check this out. Even all the lamps work. In a real airplane, if you press like a lamp, like a warning lamp, it will light up. That's for testing it and to see if it works. Check this out right there. We can press all the lamps and they will turn on right there. This is a rarity. But another rarity is for sure the circuit breaker. Let's see if we can turn on the panel lights for them. Yeah, great. Not only can we turn on the panel lights, we can literally use the circuit breaker. We can press some stuff. Let's maybe see if it works here. Let's maybe deactivate nose wheel steering. There you go. We've pulled the breaker. And that way we shouldn't be able to steer. We're not, we're not able to steer. We're literally not able to steer. That is so cool. Very realistic, almost study level aircraft. Maybe see if we can also fly it out of St. Bartholomew. For that, it might be helpful to close the doors, which I honestly don't know how to do. So let's just not care about that. We can take off. There we go. We don't really know where we're going to maybe see what, you know, navigation looks like. We have, we can activate GPS. That's just fine. We've got a little Garmin panel down here. That's really cool. Kind of a little quirk here too in the... Oh, model. Oh, God. The nose wheel steering really is bland. Let me see now. Uh, can we take off? Please? Come on. You can do it. You can do it. We're at 100 knots. Yeah, it did do it. It can do it. Indeed. There we go. Looking great. The short 360. Although it doesn't have amazing performance. Has taken off. No problem. And you know, I don't hate the gear extension thing at all. I mean, this plane is also a skydiver, so this also even makes sense. This is an incredible video. No, the short 360, I've actually just kind of fallen in love with it. Yes, it is like a van. It is definitely ugly, doesn't have a lot of style, but it is sure probably very fun to fly, very robust airplane. Although it might get a little bumpy there, but it won't crash on you. Unless you're in one of the 15 whole loss accidents. Ah. In fact, there's uh, there's been quite a lot of crashes with this airplane. That's not, not a very safe plane at all. Mm. But there we go, we're flying nicely. We can even fly up to 20,000 feet. Yes, this is pressurized. And if it ever gets hot, we, we shall turn on the fan, which genuinely has a switch for it. There we go. Yeah, fan just like that is working. I uh, really don't hate this plane. But we shall maybe try to come in for a landing, finally. For that, we might check out the other liveries we have. Oh, Arrhenia Air Airways. That's an incredible livery. So come on, let's do it. I've done some test flying these add-ons. I always fly to the same airport, St. Bartholomew or Courchevel, which I hope doesn't get to be boring over time. But those are truly great airports for testing airplanes like this to their shopping distance. Come on. Oh. Oh, wow, that was a hard landing. All right, come on. Let's do it. Reverse. Yes, reverse the engines. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, you're a turboprop. You're a robust airplane. You're able to stop no time. That was actually quite good. I mean, there we go. This airplane has to be able to fly to short runways on island airports. That's what it was built for. So the fact that this kind of works pretty well is uh, it's pretty good. That was... That poor landing gear. Yes, overall, the short 360, definitely not a beauty, but a very versatile airplane. I don't hate it at all. A bulletproof airplane, which might not be able to take off from the shortest runway in the world, Saba Airport. That might cut it very close. Oh yeah, that plane's definitely dropping. That plane is not powerful. It's, it's just powerful enough for most cases, but you can see that was almost a crash into the water. So what do you think I get so much for watching today's video? And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you very much to my highly supporting members like Jamie Ashton, Mike C, James Durham, Ragings, Met RLG, Matt Van Z, Moritz, Bellhausen, Knots Enthusiast, Shadow, New the York, Ryland Williams, Kelly Chaos, John O'Brien, and I'm addicted to Airbus A380s. Thank you.